and welcome to our service of um, morning prayer and you might notice Reverend Dave is looking a bit different today. Hello Jill. Hello Barbara. <laughs> Hello Blackpool. <laughs> uh, Jill Elston from um, St Matthew's Church in Edgeley has very very kindly agreed to join us this morning. Um, Jill would you like to um, tell everyone a bit about yourself so introduce yourself. Well um I'm at a college with Barbara at St Melitis and um, my placement church is St Matthew's in Edgeley which is just on the edge of uh, Chester Diocese so we're in Stockport near Stockport station near the motorway um, but we feel quite connected to Manchester it's only 10-12 uh, minutes on the train from Stockport to the centre of Manchester so that's us that's where we are and bring greetings to you in Blackpool from uh, St Matthew's in Edgeley Oh, and you are most welcome here. That's one of the great things about technology, isn't it? It's kind of breaking down walls at the moment because we, we, we tend to say, well, this is our church, this is um, your church, but it's not, it's, Jesus Christ church is not divided, is it? So it's so great that you could join us today. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> so we're going to begin with our um, worship. We'll just still our hearts for a moment. 
we come before the Lord. O Lord, open our lips. And, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us. And clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Creator God. To you be praise and glory for ever. As your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your Spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light, and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his work to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his. In all places of his dominion, bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. We rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. And we're just going to read the first psalm today, I'm going to read it antiphonally, it is Psalm 20. We will call on the name of the Lord our God. May the Lord hear you in the day of trouble, the name of of the God of Jacob defend you. Send you help from his sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. Remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your mind. May we rejoice in your salvation and triumph in the name of our God. May the Lord perform all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will save his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the mighty strength of his right hand. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will call only on the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. O Lord, save the king and answer us when we call upon you. We will call on the name of the Lord our God. Merciful God, purify our hearts in the flame of your spirit and transform our toil into an offering of praise that we may reject the proud rule of might and trust in Christ alone, for he is our God forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was, is beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We just move down to our canticle. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries. I will sprinkle clean water upon you 
and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses. A new heart I will give you and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. You shall be my people and I will be your God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. And our scripture reading today is taken from the Gospel of St. Luke and is chapter 7, verses 11 to 17. Soon afterwards, he went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow, and with her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came forward and touched the bear, and the bearers stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized all of them, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has looked favourably on his people. This word about him spread throughout Judea and all the surrounding country. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, Jill, we have a bit of a tradition because we're throwing you in at the deep end and you're going to speak to us now. Uh, we can send you anywhere in the world. So I asked you where you wanted to go and where was it you said? Uh, can I go to a library, please? So we're going to whiz you off. Seeing as though you're near Manchester, we're going to whiz you off to John Ryland's library, which is one of the finest libraries in our region. So. Thank you very much. Um, it's a special day for Manchester today, actually. It's, um, it's the anniversary of the bomb going off in Manchester and John Ryland's library is just down the road from that. So I think that's a really good place to go today. Well, over to you now. Thank you, Barbara. And thank you, everybody, for having me. So I've got some notes here. I will refer. It's my age, you know. I can't uh, do without my notes. So our passage starts off with, soon afterwards, he went to a town called Nain and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. Now, Nain is about five miles away from Nazareth. Don't be impressed. I got this from uh, Uncle Tom, well, Tom Wright's book. We call him Uncle Tom in our parish because he writes so we can understand him. There's no ologies in here. So Jesus is five miles from home. He's on his home turf. And there he is. He sees this funeral. And the people there are from nearby his hometown. I imagine that the lady, the widow, she didn't look too different from his own mum. And perhaps she was a similar age. Don't know. As the passage continues, it says, As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow. And with her was a large crowd from the town. It was really a big, a key word in that verse. The woman was a, vidder, a widow, a widow, teeth in. The woman was a widow. So she no longer had a husband and now her only son had died. So now she has no one to care for her, no one to look after her, no one to protect her. She's in a perilous situation. I find this out. I've got this Bible. It's maroon, it's massive, but it has really good clues at the bottom of the page of what's going on. Um, it's not very handbag friendly though, this one, but it does have some really good clues at the bottom of the page as to what's going on. And that Bible, that maroon one, it says, this woman is destitute now, but her son has died. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, do not weep. We really feel there, don't we, the compassion of Jesus. His heart goes out to this woman. He knows that her future is uncertain. These are his people, this is his place. I wonder also 
So if he had a flash forward, or was this a foreshadowing of things to come? Jesus will die and his mother will be there too at the cross. And although Jesus' death is different, we know that death cannot hold Jesus and he is raised after three days. And this boy, he, he'll live a normal life, but he will die again. But we can see some resonances here, can't we, with Jesus' life. Jesus knows the plight of this woman and he helps her. As far as we know, this woman didn't ask for help, but Jesus could see her predicament and he just thought, I need, to, I really need to help her, I want to help her. So he comes forward and he touches the beer and the bearers, they stand still and he says, young man, I say to you, rise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Just that compassion and the power of Jesus is seen right there, isn't it? And he brings that man back to life. And verse 15 says, Jesus gave him to his mother the best gift ever. Giving the boy back to his mother, that gift, it's life transforming, isn't it, for the woman? She has her life back now. There are a few instances I was thinking about in the Bible where we're told to protect widows and orphans. And we're told to plead a case for them. The widow in this story, she's sort of like uh, a representative of those in society, those who have no protection, no income, no one to speak up for them. Those people that are really, really extremely vulnerable. And it just makes us think when we're faced with people like that, what would Jesus do? You know those wristbands, WWJD, what would Jesus do in this situation? He would be filled with compassion. He tried to help, he tried to restore that person to a place where they're not so vulnerable, where they do have some protection. He would try to give someone to fight their corner. It really makes us think this morning. The passage goes on. Fear seized all of them and they glorified God saying, a great prophet has risen among us and God has looked favorably on his people. I'm going to do something impressive here, but don't be impressed. It's from the Maroon book again. These people say a great prophet has come. It's because they know their scriptures, what we call the Old Testament. And there's a passage in 1 Kings 17, tells me in here, where Elijah cries out to the Lord, and the Lord hears him and raises a widow's son from the dead. Now, these people in name, they recognise that. Think, oh, this man Jesus, this is the action of a prophet. And they think that Jesus is a prophet and God has looked favourably on them. Now we know that this is chapter 7 of Luke and Luke goes on to 20 odd chapters. So this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And the word about Jesus is just going to grow and grow. And so we start seeing this happen. In the last verse, the word about him spread through Judea to all the surrounding country. And that word about Jesus continues today, continues to spread. That's our job, isn't it? Just been telling my, uh, my congregation in my sermon this week, that's our job, to tell people about Jesus. He's not just a compassionate man. He's not just a prophet. He's not just a miracle worker, but someone who defeats death for us, to save us, and mend our relationship with the Father. Well, I hope that sets us all up for the day, the good news of Jesus, and something to tell others about. And thank you very much, Blackpool, for having me drop in this morning from Manchester and from Stockport. Back to you, Barbara. Thank you so much, Jill. Um, that was a, it fell on quite a difficult passage, but I think we see the true character of God in that, don't we? Um, the the most the rawest time the most difficult times, and um, the presence of God, and I don't know if um you saw I linked it to the um Facebook page, but there was um an online believe in Bolton this week, and Bishop Jill spoke on that, and somebody had asked him um, how can you still trust in God, um when someone you love has died, 
And obviously they, they didn't have Jesus right there and then to re resurrect them. Um, and she spoke so eloquently on it and she pointed it back to the cross and said at the moment uh, when Jesus was on the cross he cried out for uh, my Lord my Lord why have you forsaken me and God didn't answer but then she referred to it's not the end of the story Revelation 21 tells us there will be this new heaven and new earth coming and it's all this hope isn't it it's just the love of the Father and, and through Jesus um, that gives us this great um, compassion yeah. Yeah. So, so thank you for that, because it is a difficult day for many, especially um, close to home with the bombings in Manchester three years ago, and also the death of Lee Rigby. There were some horrific acts going on in the world at this time. But we were reminded that there is a God who loves us and that would die for just one of us. So, indeed. Shall we... Um, <laughs> I'm I'm used to Reverend Dave um command like he 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 always has something to say about something. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think it does it, it does it does remind us today, and, and especially for um, our friends in Manchester today, with a lot of people thinking about that. So yeah, and maybe tune in to um, Believe in Bolton as well. Go and try and find that on the internet and see Bishop Jill talking. That would be real, wouldn't it? Yes, because she's such a good speaker. And they had one of the gladiators there, a former gladiator, and he was talking. He was so good. So if you haven't seen that, I'd advise you to watch it. It was very, um, very, very um, uplifting watch. I remember that. Gladiators ready. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, we, we will carry on with our warring <laughs> through prayer as we carry on with our... Um, our chant. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people. And kindle us, sorry, and kindle in us the fire of your love. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, fill the hearts of your people. Renew the face of your creation, Lord, pouring on us the gifts of your Spirit. And kindle in us the fire of your love. For the creation waits with eager longing for the glorious liberty of the children of God. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. And our Gospel Canter. Christ is on earth on high and has led captivity captive. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Christ has gone up on high and led captivity captive. Alleluia. Alleluia. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks for this day. We thank you for every blessing that you've bestowed upon us. 
Lord, we thank you for your word, for the hope it brings in difficult times. We just pray for all those who are struggling today, particularly with loss, with distance, with loneliness. or with just overwhelming dist um, distance, distractedness, um, disconnect. Lord, your character is loving, it's gracious, it's of mercy. And we just pray that your healing and your compassion envelopes everyone in need today. Pray for all those families who are struggling um, with grief particularly in Manchester. Pray for healing of their hearts. And we know the revelation that this is not the end of the story. Thank you for all that is good, that we are able to still come together and pray and worship you as a church. We just pray for the spirit of fear and anxiety to, to be lessened as life slowly begins again in a, a regular pattern. Pray protection round everybody, Lord. We pray that more people turn to you. They seek you. And Lord, your word promises that whenever we seek you, we will find you. We just leave this moment open now for our own personal prayers. We bring to you. Lord, we pray this morning that you are in all our lives. You are with us in the highs and lows. And we pray this morning, especially for Reverend Dave and Alison, their anniversary. We pray for Graham and Mary from uh, St. Matthew's in Edgeley in their 40th anniversary this week. We pray for all those celebrating. We pray for all those who are having more tricky times. We pray for all those students who are missing their A-levels or their GCSEs this year. Those who are homeschooling. We pray for everybody who is feeling lonely or suffering with their mental health. We just thank you, Lord, that you're with us through the ups and downs of life. And we thank you for the hope that we hear in your good news and your gospel. Amen. Amen. And I'll collect for the day. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. 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 And being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love.
Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 And thank you so much, Jill, for joining us today. Oh, it's my great pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And invite me to Blackpool. Oh, it's, it great. Seaside. <laughs> it's great in Blackpool. And the sun is a bit blustery today, but the sun is still shining. Oh, <laughs> How are you coping with homeschooling? You're doing a bit of homeschooling, are you? We are, yeah. Um, we're struggling a little bit. We got a little bit behind, so we're going to try and catch up at, at uh, half term. Um, we're just trying to balance homeschooling, everything else that you want to do, a bit of time off, mental health, trying to get out and about um, outside, get some fresh air. Um, so, yeah, big up to everyone who's um, homeschooling, really. It's, it's not easy. Um, I think the kids are trying really, really hard. Mm, um, yeah, so we're, we're getting there. <laughs> it's not easy, though. No, I think a lot of them are missing their friends, aren't they? So. Oh, definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but we, we, we made a new friend today. We had Jill with us, so we thank you for that. And we just pray that Reverend Dave has a well-deserved day off because he very, very rarely takes a day off. I mean, I think this is the first one I've known him to take off um, for a long, long time. So um, we pray that him and Alison have the most wonderful of days. And we will be back on Sunday. Reverend Dave will be back with us um, at 10.30 for a service of Holy Communion. So we just pray that you have a wonderful um, time until we see you again on Sunday. Thank you. Bye.